Oh. Alright. Alright, so today we're going through chapter 4, energy analysis of closed system. So let us begin. So uh, the majority of this uh, video will be talking about uh, moving boundary work. So what's moving boundary work? Like I said, it's a path dependent process from the previous video. So what does it mean that it doesn't depend on just a start and end state, it also depends on the path taken. So remember what's work done. Work done is just force time distance, what, correct? So let's say uh, you want to move from point A, assuming a, a linear line, basically uh, just a flat plane, you move from point A to point B. You use certain energy from point A to move from walk from point A to point B. But if you walk 10 times compared to walking one time, there'll be an energy difference. So you put in more work, correct? So this is basically what is it. Uh. So moving boundary work is dependent on the path that you take. So even though you go from point A to point B, you can have different amount of work depending on the path that you take. Okay? So basically, you can find the area area under this PV diagram in the quasi equilibrium process is the work done. Alright, so you see, area under C is 5 kJ, area under B is 8 kJ, area under A is 10 kJ. Basically, you can see area under it, the larger, the higher the amount of work. Okay? So what's quasi equilibrium and what is its purpose? So we know that gas move at very high speed. So when you compress, expand, it's all very high speed. And then because at such a high speed, it's not really in an equilibrium state right, in some sense. So it's very hard to calculate this kind of uh, questions mathematically. So by using quasi-equilibrium process, right, you can approximate to actual engine. So quasi-equilibrium quasi basically is a slow process. So imagine you have certain amount of small weights, okay, very, very, a lot of small weights over here. And then in this cylinder, there's a certain amount of pressure. Pressure times the area of this piston exert a certain force. And the weight has certain force acting down. So at a certain point in time when the piston is not moving, it's in equilibrium. Correct? As you slowly remove certain weight, the piston will shift up because the force now has reduced. And then the cylinder pressure can push the piston up. And then the force will balance again. They remove more weight and then the piston will go up again. Remove more weight, the piston will go up again. So this piston moves by certain distance, so it's force times distance. Okay, so basically this is a quasi-equilibrium process because at every small step, the forces are balanced in equilibrium. And then we use this to approximate to how actual engine cycles behave. Uh. Okay, so this makes it very easy for us to calculate. So this, this video will be a lot of uh, example questions. So let's look at example 4-1, basically a boundary work for constant volume process. So in this question, it's a rigid tank contains air, so we know we can use an uh, ideal gas equation at 500 kilopascal and 150 degrees Celsius. As a result of heat transfer to surrounding, the temperature and pressure inside the tank drops to 65 degrees Celsius and 400 kilopascal respectively. So we need to determine the boundary work done in this process. So remember what I said, it's the area under the PV diagram. So in this case, the keyword is rigid tank. So what does rigid tank mean? It means that it's a constant volume. So, if boundary work is integral of P dV and you know the dV is zero, this means the boundary work is zero, which makes sense, right? Because the boundary did not move at all. How can it produce any work? All right. So, first question is very simple. Let's follow. Up. Now, this question four dash three, basically isothermal compression of ideal gas. Okay. So we have this question. You can read it yourself. So, what is the key thing that I want you to take away from this? Is see, it says F. So we know we can use ideal gas equation, and we know that. Uh, we know the temperature inside the cylinder remains constant. Okay, so T not equals to constant. So we know that ideal gas equation is PV equals to MRT. And then because T not is constant, because constant temperature, then we know that mass is constant, so of course it's a closed system. The mass doesn't escape the boundary. And then this is the uh, ideal gas constant. So basically, all these three are constant. This means that PV is also constant. So we can rewrite this into PV equals MRT not equals C. Or we can change it to P equals to C over V. We know that work done by the boundary is integral of P dV. So I just use this, I sub into here, and I can integrate. C is a constant, I take it out of the integral, and I integrate this, and I find out to be C ln V2 over V1. We know that C can also be expressed as this C equals to P times V. So I can express it as P1 V1 ln V2 over V1. This P1 V1, you also can use it as P2 V2. Uh, 
is still the same. So there's no difference. Subbing the value, you can find our answer to be negative 55.5 kilojoules. So polytropic process boundary work. So what's polytropic process? Basically, it just follows this equation. So P1, V1 to the power of N equals to P2, V2 to the power of N. And why is it that we use polytropic? Because in real world, the gas expansion contraction follow very closely to this equation. Uh, okay? So we know that P V to the power of N equals to C, which is a constant. Okay? So as usual, we try to express this equation in terms of P first. I see this P V to the power of N equals to C in terms of P, and then I do the integration. Okay, so when I integrate, I'll get something like this. Okay, so how do we get from this to here? Basically, I will expand out the equation over here because we know that c equals to p1 v1 to the power n and p2 v2 to the power n. So I just simply sub uh, because we expand c into here and c into here, right? So I just use p2 v2 to the power n to put into this equation and p1 v1 to the n to put into this equation. Okay, and very simply, I can find this. And what you realize is what happens if n is equals to 1? 1 minus 1, this will become 0, and then this will be a very huge number. So this won't make sense if n equals to 1. Okay, so this equation only can work with everything but n equals to 1. So what happens if n is, is equals to 1? You just use an integration. Because we know integral p dv, and I know the formula of c v bound negative 1 dv, and I just need to integrate. And very simply, I can find the equation over here. So it's a super simple uh, way of calculating. Alright, so this is a more complex question. Expansion of gases against a spring. Okay, so you can read the question yourself, you can pause the video. Okay, so once you finish reading, let us solve the question. So basically, this kind of complex question, you can break it down into smaller parts where you could understand it more easily. So right now, I break it down into just the piston and the spring. Alright, so the work done, okay, the work done by this system can be due to the gas expansion using force and distance and also the work done by the spring. Okay, so I break down into these two portions and I draw the PV diagram, it looks something like this. Okay? And why is it why does it look like this shape? Okay, so let us just listen. So we know that see there's the opening over here. This will mean that atmospheric pressure will remain the same. Because when you push this up, atmospheric will still remain the same. If you go down, atmospheric pressure will still remain the same. Atmospheric pressure will not change at all. Okay? So this would mean that the pressure inside should balance the pressure outside. Alright, so this would mean that it's constant pressure for due to if we just if I just ignore the spring itself, huh, then we know that this is just a constant pressure. Okay? What happens if I just consider just the spring itself? We know that uh, uh spring force is linear, so it's force equals to kx. So this would mean that it would be a linear graph. Okay? So now I break it down into two portions, region 1 and region 2, as shown over here, and I start to solve. Okay. So we know that we want to find out what, what's the final pressure. We know the volume is actually uh basically double in volume. Okay. So this will mean that V2 is equal to 2 times V1. And I can easily find out over here. Okay? Then because of that, I can find the change in volume. Like what's the volume change from 1 to 2? And we know that to be so I use uh, V2 minus V1, okay, that's a change in volume, and I divide it by the area, this will mean that the displacement of the spring, like how much does the spring deform, calculate it to be 0 0.2 meter. Since force equals to kx, right, and we know the k value, we can multiply by the displacement of 0 0.2 meter, and I find out the force will be 30 kN, and the pressure will be force over area, find out to be 120 kPa. Okay, basically, since if I don't consider the spring at all, right, we know that this is a constant pressure, so constant pressure all the way. When you consider the spring, right, since the spring pressure changed by 120 kilopascal, so this will mean that the final pressure is just 200 plus 120, okay? So the final pressure will be 320 kilopascal. Okay, next, we find out the total work done by the gas. So total work done found by the gas is integral of PDV, basically area under the graph. So very simple, we can find the area of the trapezoid and very simply you calculate the area is just uh, 13 kilojoules. Next question, we're trying to find out what's the work done by the spring. So there's two ways, the first way is find the area of the triangle over here. 
region 2. Okay, so one way is to find out region 2 and find the area to be 3 kilojoules, or I can find out the elastic potential energy, which is half kx squared, and I'll still arrive at the same answer. Okay? So just some food for thought for this first part of this video, basically uh, more on moving boundary work. So let's say if I seal off, it's the exact same question and I seal off the top. Okay, this would mean that it's no more uh, atmospheric pressure acting on this. So in this case, you must account for the compression of air and a compression of spring. So it will not look so smooth, a linear graph. It will look like a curved graph. Either curve upward or curve the other way. Basically, it will not be linear. Okay? And how would the PV diagram look like? Uh, I already explained. So you try to think of your concept and try to apply it. Uh. Uh, just some hints is basically something like this, just that you will be adding some form of curve. Okay? It can be straight also if you use an approximation. So just some food for thought. Uh. It depends on what the question gives you, what kind of information does the question gives you. So that's all for uh, this video.